Okay, hey, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is James Truckle. I'm an applications engineer with Plexum. Uh, and I'm excited today to review the development and execution of real-time power electronics models using Plex's simulation platform. At the end of this webinar, you should be fairly convinced that real-time simulations do not need to be expensive uh, and they don't need to be only, only utilized by a few dedicated experts in an organization. Uh, this demo highlights the offline to real-time workflow for developing simulation models. It also illustrates that the Plex RT box requires little to no expert knowledge or training to successfully design a power electronic simulate and then simulate it in real time. Uh, please feel free to ask questions at any point during today's webinar using the GoToWebinar control window, and our team will do our best uh, to answer. Here's a very quick intro for those who are unfamiliar with our company. Plexum creates design tools for the development and testing of power electronic systems. Uh, the electrical engineering software Plex is widely adopted in various industries and academia worldwide. It is a complete power conversion system simulation package that yields robust and fast results. It comes available in two versions. Uh, Plex block set works in the MATLAB Simulink environment while Plex Standalone offers an independent solution. Uh, both feature a comprehensive component library, which covers not only the electrical, but also the magnetic, mechanical, and thermal aspects of a power conversion system, and then also including an uh, associated controls library. Uh, lastly, we are a Swiss company fa uh, founded in Zurich in 2002, and in the US we have offices in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and in Seattle, Washington. Uh, let's quickly go over the development tools I will be showing in today's webinar. So I will be using Plex standalone to build models intended for execution on real-time hardware. Modeling in the Simulink environment is also available by using the block set. Uh, as mentioned. Uh, the Plex Coder is a code generation tool that is used to program the RT box. It can also be used to generate code for execution on other targets, such as microcontrollers or other real-time simulators. Uh, today, with a single click in the Plex Coder tool, I will generate code for discretized versions of the plant and controller models. The code will then be compiled and uploaded to the Plex RT box platform for real-time execution. The Plex schematic will then become an interactive environment for us to observe the performance of the real-time system under test. The purpose of this webinar is to show that you can get a real-time simulation running quickly and again without expert training using Plexum's development tools. It is also intended to highlight the offline to real-time simulation workflow that is inherent when using these tools. Uh, now let's define a few steps that we're gonna take to make this successful and interesting. As mentioned, the first thing we will do is use the Plex simulation tool to build a model capable of being executed on our RTBox platform. Uh, Plex is intuitive to use, so this should be a fairly straightforward process. Uh, the power electronics plant system that we're going to be building today is a two-level voltage source inverter with a simple RL load. Uh, due to our tightly integrated software and hardware platforms, configuring the inputs and the outputs of the RT box, such as digital PWM signals and analog voltage or current measurements, uh, will be very intuitive and it's going to be done directly uh, within the Plex schematic. Our first real-time system model uh, that we will be uh, uh, running a simulation for um, in real time will be operated in an open loop fashion with one RT box acting as a controller with no feedback from the plant model, which is running on another RT box. After demonstrating a few methods and features which are incorporated into Plex to allow the user to ensure the fidelity of the real-time simulation, we will then close the loop and replace the open loop controller with a DQ frame current controller. And then this will complete our virtual prototyping demonstration. Uh, so let's get started here. Uh, we'll open up Plex. Uh, and on the right hand side of the screen, you can now see the Plex schematic where all of the modeling takes place. 
it will also serve as the principal interface to the RT box when the real-time simulation is running. Uh, to build up a model, I need to drag components from the library browser on the left-hand side of the screen. Those already familiar with Plex or other modeling software should have no trouble here. The system we are building today is a voltage source inverter, so using the search bar, I can find the required components. To start, I need to build the plant model in a designated subsystem. Uh, so we can search for the subsystem component, drag and drop it into the schematic, and now we can rename this as uh, the plant. I can open this subsystem by double clicking, uh, and now uh, I can remove the default signals, and I can get started building my model. So I'll first need to add a DC voltage source. So again, utilizing the search function. And I'll also now need three IGBT half bridges, which are located in the power modules section of the electrical domain components. So I'm using, uh, I'm using a keyboard shortcut here. I can copy the components uh, for the other two phases. Uh, just for your reference, a shortcut uh, sheet can be downloaded from the GoToWebinar control window. Uh, I'll also need a simple RL load for each, uh, each of my phases that represents a grid impedance. So let's get an inductor and also a resistor. And while I'm doing this, uh, you know, while I'm connecting everything together here, I'll need an ammeter as well. Um, and while I'm connecting everything together here, uh, feel free to review the technical specification document for the RT box, which is also found in the GoToWebinar control window. Um, I'm just connecting up uh, our, our schematic here. Okay, so our electrical circuit is now uh, completed. Uh, let's set some parameters for the components that we brought in. So for our DC source, we're gonna set this to 800 volts and we'll just check the box here, uh, which uh, displays the parameter in the schematic. Uh, and for our inductor and resistor, we're just gonna use the default values, uh, which are uh, one millihenry and one ohm uh, respectively. Okay, so now our, our plant uh, circuit is, is fairly complete. Uh, and now what we need to do is we need to use special interface bro uh, blocks that configure the functionality of the various analog and digital IOs of the box. Um, so uh, these blocks are found in the RT box component library uh, and they're used to make simple associations between signals in the Plex model and a physical pin at the front of the box. So for, for incoming PWM signals to the box, we will use a PWM capture block. Uh, once an interface block is added to the subsystem, you can notice that a signal port is created on the parent schematic. Um, so on that, on that parent schematic here, we have this new port uh, that was created. So in the blocks parameters, so in my PWM blocks parameters, I need to specify the digital input channel numbers which in this case are channels zero to five. Uh, since this is a vectorized signal, I need to use a signal demultiplexer block. Uh, and I can find that in my browser. And, uh, and I'll need six outputs here. Uh, and this splits the six signals for routing to the individual IGBTs. And now by selecting all three half bridges and holding the Alt key, I can use an auto routing feature to connect these blocks inputs to my PWM signals. So now you can see that the, the, first, uh, the first three signals are uh, for my high side switching and my uh, next three signals now uh, as I'm cleaning up the model for the low side switching. Um, great, so now what I need to use is I need to use an analog out block to route the vectorized or what will be the vectorized signals of the phase currents uh, from my ammeters uh, to these analog output channels. And we need to define again, uh, some channel numbers here. Uh, so we'll do that uh, zero to two.
And we also need to add uh, then another uh, multiplexer block. And we will use, uh, or we can use the uh, auto routing again here. Great. So very easy, very intuitive. Uh, you know, the tool, um, you know, this auto routing feature makes, makes connecting these components uh, a little bit easier for us. Um, and uh, lastly, we're going to need to add just uh, a Plex scope or two Plex scopes, let's say uh, one for the uh, PWM signals that we want to monitor, uh, and then one for the phase currents that we might want to want, what might want to monitor here. Great. Uh, so now our, our plant subsystem is now complete. Uh, if you are following along with us, I would save the model at this point. Um, we can do so ourselves as well. Um, and now we, what we need to do is we need to create another subsystem block. Um, so I will go back to my library browser uh, and grab another subsystem, which I will rename as the controller. Um, and again, for our first real-time simulation experiment, we're going to be using open loop control, but within my controller here, I still need to add a, a few things here. So uh, I need to first add two PWM out interface blocks. And these are special blocks which generate configurable PWM signals based on a user provided modulation index. Uh, so for our high side switches, I'm gonna go into the parameters and I'm gonna use digital output channel zero to two. Uh, again, I'll check the box here. Um, and uh, and for the low side switches, uh, I'm going to use channels three to five. Uh, and now I only also need to make a change to the polarity parameter for my low side to ensure proper complementary switching. Um, so uh, I will now uh, grab a sine wave generator. And this is going to uh, control the modulation index. Uh, the parameters here uh, are specified as 50 hertz, which represents the fundamental frequency, and phase differences of one third of a cycle to ensure balanced three phase currents. Um, yeah. So our components are connected together. And as a final step, I need to then connect the generated PWM signals uh, from my controller to the uh, PWM capture block, which is in my plant model. So I'll do that here at the uh, highest level and the PWM capture block expects a vectorized signal. So I do need another multiplexer block again. Uh, the input this time will be two vectorized signals, each with a component width of, or uh, each with a signal width of three. Um, great, um, so, now our, our uh, system models are, are complete here. Uh, and in order to now deploy these models onto the RT box, I need to enable code generation for both the controller and the plant models. Uh, this option is only available if you have an active license for the Plex coder. And I do this by right clicking the subsystem, going into execution settings, uh, and checking this option, uh, enable code generation. And this causes the subsystem to be added to a list of systems in the coder options dialog, which will approach uh, momentarily. And checking this all option also does make the subsystem atomic. Um, uh, so now we're ready to deploy our models onto the RT box. Uh, I'm gonna turn my webcam on at this point uh, so you can see the setup for our real-time simulation. Uh, uh, note that there uh, is a bar between the webcam video and my screen share that can slide to resize each one. Uh, so please feel free to do so uh, while I'm speaking here and you can get a good look at the RT box. You can see here that the digital and analog IO for the, R2, for the two RT boxes are connected together using two 37 pin D sub connectors. So specifically, the digital output of the controller RT box is connected to the digital input of the plant RT box. And then the analog output signals from the plant are connected to the controller's analog input channels. Uh, both RT boxes are already powered on. 
Uh, the green LED light indicates that they are ready. Uh, the Plex coder now is going to be our cockpit for programming the box. <clears throat> uh, so we can open the Plex coder. We've already done it. It's from the, uh, the coder submenu. Uh, for both subsystems, I will specify a discretization time step of 10 microseconds. So this has been purposely oversized. Um, and now we need to make sure that the configurations in our uh, target tab for both of our subsystems um, are correct. So we need to set the target to our T box. Uh, and right now we're going to leave the IO voltage ranges as default. Um, uh, and now we're really ready to build our models. Uh, our, our targets are configured for both our plant and our controller. Um, I'm connected uh, directly point to point uh, over Ethernet for these boxes, um, which is why I can see them. Uh, but really, you just need to be on the same network. Uh, and now we're ready to build. Uh, each build typically takes about five to 10 seconds. Keep an eye on your webcam video. Uh, once the build is finished, a blue LED light indicates that the model is running. Uh, first, I'll build the plant model. Uh, and then uh, now the controller. So the plant model finished. There's a blue LED light running and the controller model is loading. Great, so both LED lights are now blue and our real-time simulation is running. So now what we can do is we can enter a special external mode via the Plex coder to connect to the real-time simulation. Uh, so when connected in external mode, any scopes and display blocks inside of the Plex model get populated with simulation results from the RT box. Uh, we can also then interact with the system that is running on the RT box by changing different component parameters and system configurations. Uh, we'll just activate a trigger here, uh, an auto trigger, so that we can see the phase currents displayed in the real-time scope. Uh, so we have nice sinusoidal uh, currents here. Um, so this sort of concludes the open loop portion of, of this demo. Um, I hope that everything up until this point was clear uh, and that our workflow leading to a real-time simulation is intuitive and user-friendly. Uh, however, we really do need to take this one step further and close the loop on our simulation. Uh, so I have in my component library a partially built DQ frame current controller, which we will incorporate into our model. Um, before I do that, I would like to quickly speak to the benefits of this virtual prototyping development approach. So I'll just show a few more slides. Um, so in many cases with the Plex RT box, uh, engineers might have physical hardware interfaced to the box. For example, to validate a control algorithm uh, running on a microcontroller, we would interface an embedded control system to the box which would then be running a plant model. Uh, and this is then called controller hardware in the loop testing. Uh, and this is that image here on the left. Uh, so kind of a virtual representation of, of what that controller hardware in the loop test looks like. Alternatively, we may choose to program the box with control algorithms uh, to test in conjunction with an actual power stage in what is referred to as rapid control prototyping. So in our system, uh, our virtual prototyping system, we're actually doing a bit of both. We're running control models on one RT box, running a converter on another RT box, and there are very practical benefits to this virtual prototyping uh, approach. Uh, you know, this can be a really beneficial intermediate stage before connecting together real parts of a system, as it allows you to check uh, ADC and DAC interfaces, adjusting the offset and scaling values as necessary. You can also define pinouts for your future tests. Um, another potential benefit is a faster plant controller model execution. For example, it may take much longer for a simulation to run offline in Plex than it will take in real time, where 10 simulation seconds corresponds to 10 real seconds. Lastly, because each of our subsystems are executing independently in real time, we're able to get quite a realistic scenario where there is non-synchronous execution of different parts of the power electronic system. Okay, so let's now go back to Plex. 
um, and, and close the loop on our uh, real-time simulation. So I'm going to disconnect from external mode, and I'm going to open up my controller here. So now what I need to do is I need to replace the sine wave generator in our model with the DQ frame current controller. Uh, so let's grab that. Let's look under the mask here to see how it's modeled. Um, the controller is based on a textbook implementation with individual PI regulators for the direct and quadrature currents. Um, so now uh, what I need to do is I, I need to uh, connect the modulation uh, index to my PWM out blocks, which I've done. Um, and I need to make a few other adjustments. So first, I will regulate the quadrature and direct currents to 300 amps and zero amps, respectively. And I'll use uh, constant blocks from my uh, component library here. Great, so next let's just confirm that reasonable controller parameters are used. Uh, we can double click and see the, uh, the the controller parameters. This is a masked subsystem, so we have some some parameters that we can tune here. And these are all uh, these are all set up correctly uh, based on offline simulations that check the system response for different parameter setups. Um, so now I need to use an analog in block to configure the incoming analog signals representing my measured phase, phase currents from those ammeters that we set up previously. Uh, so let's double click this block. Uh, and then now in addition to defining my analog uh, in channel numbers, which will be zero to two, I need to make the port configurations for the ADCs and DACs consistent, uh, meaning that I need to use the same scaling factor for the measured signals leaving the plant subsystem and the incoming signals that my controller samples. Uh, the factor that I will use is 300, and I need to scale the signals uh, up into my controller and down uh, from my RT box. And actually, uh, lastly, I just need to go back to my controller and add a scope to monitor uh, the signals from the analog in. Great. Uh, so now um, to officially close the loop here at the top level of the schematic, I need to connect these two signals. So my analog out to my analog in. Great. Uh, so so this uh, is kind of a, a, a good point now where we can talk about a few steps that we can take offline in Plex to verify our models before executing them on the RT box. So each of these... Uh, uh, um, peripheral or, or, or interface blocks that we've been uh, adding for the RT box in Plex have two different model implementations. Uh, so looking under the mask of this analog in, we can examine these. So one implementation labeled schematic resembles the behavior of the hardware IOs in an offline simulation. The other one, which is labeled code, shows how the generated real-time code accesses the RT box hardware. So what this gives the user is it gives them a duality uh, to seamlessly transition between offline and real-time simulations without making any changes to the model. Um, yeah, so uh, so let's right-click the plant subsystem uh, and we'll access the execution settings again. Um, and here we have a parameter called simulation mode. So again, this parameter is only available if you do have a license of the Plex coder. And when this parameter is set to normal, which is the default, the subsystem is simulated like a normal uh, subsystem in Plex, a normal atomic subsystem, I should say. When the parameter is set to code gen, uh, the, the generated code is then compiled and linked to Plex to be executed instead of the schematic-based subsystem during the simulation. So we're gonna run these two simulations, save the traces, and then compare the two results from normal and code gen. So first we'll run a, a normal simulation. Uh, we can just go simulation start. Uh, and again, so this is going to allow us to verify the fidelity of the generated code. So more specifically, it will allow us to tune the discretization step size of our model offline before deploying a model to the RT box. If our simulated waveforms look good when run in cogen mode offline, 
then we can specify the same discretization step size to run in real time on the RT box. So we are using this approach, uh, this code gen approach for our plant subsystem because it is more numerically challenging to run this inverter model uh, in real time than our control model. So our, sim our normal simulation is here. Uh, I can save the, the trace as normal simulation. Um, and now to run in code gen mode, uh, I do need to open up the Plex coder again, um, and I need to ensure my, my discretization step size is specified, which it should be at 10 microseconds. Uh, and now I just need to change the target to generic. Um, uh, so this 10 microsecond uh, step size should be easily achieved by the RT box. Um, so now we can generate uh, the code. Um, actually, we may need, yeah, we'll generate the code. So that's going to create uh, some C code. Uh, and then we'll go back to our model and we'll change the simulation mode now to reference the generated code, uh, which we just did. Uh, so now we can run uh, another simulation. And now in the scope, we can save this trace as uh, code gen and inspect the resulting waveforms. Um, so to be clear, rather than the continuous state equations of the circuit schematic, this simulation used the discretized code for the same circuit that we compiled on my computer. So, um, and then this will now, the generated code will eventually be loaded onto the RT box. Uh, and now when we zoom in, it's easy to notice a slight dis discrepancy, which is expected between the, the waveforms of a normal simulation and those from our discretized code gen model. Uh, at this point, we must decide if uh, the, whether or not these uh, settings produce waveforms offering enough fidelity to designate this test a success. If the answer is yes, we can proceed and deploy the models onto each RT box for real-time, non-synchronous execution. If the answer is no, then we do need to then uh, perhaps lower the discretization rate uh, and look at the waveforms again. Uh, in our case, I am happy with these waveforms and I'm ready to have the two subsystems running independently in real time on RT boxes. So back in the Plex coder window, back in the Plex coder window, uh, let's see. I need to uh, change the target to RT box. Uh, and I need to ensure that the analog and digital voltage ranges are correct. So uh, based on the scaling factors that we set up in those IO blocks previously, I'm gonna make sure my, that my analog outputs from the plant uh, are accepting those ranges. Uh, so minus five to five volts, and then the same for the controller on the input side. Um, now let's build each subsystem. Uh, first, we'll do the plant model. Um, and then we'll do uh, the controller model when that is finished. Again, you can look at your uh, webcams here. Uh, the mo there are models already running on the RT box, so they are gonna do a bit of a, a cycle. They'll, they'll turn off the current model, they'll load the new model. Um, and while these are loading, I would like to mention one feature of external mode that we didn't get to discuss previously. I mentioned that some components within your model can be adjusted or tuned during a real-time simulation, but the parameter inlining tab uh, in this coder menu allows you to define these components. So examples of commonly tuned components are controller gain blocks, source blocks, and manual switches. Great, so both boxes are now running as indicated by the blue LED lights, uh, and now I can verify the performance of my controller by entering uh, external mode and inspecting the currents leaving the emulated inverter. Uh, I only need to set up a trigger for the scope to capture waveforms. Um, so I'll just set up a trigger on channel zero, uh, or yep, and uh, and I'll set a quick, uh, I'll do a trigger delay here um, of minus 1000 steps, and this will just make sure my offline and, and real-time waveforms line up uh, quite nicely uh, in, the, in the time domain. Um, so everything looks pretty good, uh, you know, uh, I zoomed in here um, and you can see uh, how the previously simulated offline waveforms in Plex 
uh, line up with now our real-time simulations in the Plex scope. So the integrated workflow allows us to see how closely these match. Now, in our case, there is a slight DC offset uh, on our real-time waveforms, so this might necessitate then uh, perhaps a final tuning of our I.O. Um, great, so uh, now one final feature to show uh, is a web interface that is uh, built into the RT box, uh, and this allows you to look at the execution time uh, of the subsystems. So this is accessed in the Plex Coder tab here, uh, on this computer button. Um, and once we're in the external, uh, in uh, the web interface, you can see here that the current cycle time for the model is about one microsecond. Uh, so based on these execution times, we could choose to lower the discretization time step and rebuild the models. However, we're actually gonna end here um, with a few conclusions. Um, you know, the RT box was really the, the result of some ground up in-house development uh, aimed at making real-time simulation of power electronics more accessible and easier to use. So without the need of specialized training or, you know, a large capital expense, any engineer developing hardware or controls now does have the option to successfully utilize real-time simulation as an everyday tool. Uh, you know, you've noticed, you might have noticed the uh, RT box is quite desktop size, so it really is designed for, for uh, every engineer working on power electronics. Uh, we have a very highly skilled staff, both uh, in Zurich and in the US, and we're ready to assist you throughout your development cycle. So please do contact, contact us today uh, to, to have, you know, a, a consultation and talk about uh, how some of these systems might be incorporated into your uh, development process. Uh, pricing information is available on our website. Uh, thank you all for your attention. I, I do hope this demo was interesting and easy to follow. A recording of it will be made available on the Plexum website soon. Um, we do have a couple of conferences coming up that our team will be attending. Uh, APEC is in two weeks, which is in uh, Southern California in the Anaheim area. Uh, PCIM is in May, uh, so please stop by our booth if you attend these shows. Uh, come see what's new. Uh, come talk to us about what's up and coming. Uh, there is a survey at the end of this webinar. Uh, we do really appreciate your feedback, so if you have ideas for future webinars, please include them. If you have feedback about this webinar, uh, please write some. Uh, at this point, we will review a few questions uh, that we did receive uh, during the webinar.